Hello everyone, this is Nash. Uh, you know, in a physics class, we might usually have a function, uh, for example, like the x of t, uh, the position as a function of time. For example, this might be now uh, 2 times t squared plus 3 times t and plus 1. This is the position as a function of time. Simply by looking at this uh, x of t. It is just too complicated for us to, 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 to understand what kind of motion it is because it's now changing its position at different time. It can plug in t1 or t2 into this equation and you will have a different position. So since the x as a function of time is too complicated for us to, to see, uh, to predict what kind of motion it might be, we would like to, we always like to take the derivative of the x of t. And it turns out to be um, the velocity as a function of time. And uh, how to do the derivative? We always know we need to multiply this term uh, by its power. And what is more, we subtract 1 from its power. So and it, the 2 times t squared turns out to be the 4 times t. And for the 3 times t, uh, it is now uh, multiply by uh, the by its power and what is more you subtract one from its power so it turns out to be t to the zero power and anything to the zero power is is one so and the three times t becomes three when you take the derivative of the x of t so today i wanted to show you how to do the proof of derivative of a general form uh, why should we take the derivative like this is there any mathematical proof is there any reason why we should do this yes it is so in order to do this um, we need to first re uh, remind us what is the definition of the derivative what is the definition actually uh, the definition of a derivative like the DDT uh, let's say we want to take the derivative of some function of time f of t, we want to do the derivative of it and it is defined by taking the limit by taking the limit as delta t approaches zero by taking the limit as delta t approaches zero so that means I, uh, I now change the time for only a little bit there, are, there is only a very small amount of change in time and while the time is now changing and your function is going to, uh, according to this diagram, your function, uh, your f of t is going to increase a little bit as well. And I want to find out the ratio uh, of the delta f divided by the delta t by taking the limit as delta t approaches zero. So it will be look like this. The f of t plus delta t minus f of t divided by a uh, really small amount of change in time and the delta t is now approaching zero by taking the limit as delta t approaches zero this is the basic definition of the derivative the derivative of a function of time with respect to time t and since now the function is is t to the nth power <coughs> Today, the the man, uh, the the role the the, ro uh, the role of f of t the function uh, the function uh, the f as a function of time is the, uh, is t to the nth power. So I can replace the f of t simply by t to the n, the t to the nth power. So let's keep going. The limit delta t approaches zero. And now the function is t to the nth power and the f of t plus delta t will be t plus delta t to the nth power and minus t to the n divided by the change in time. So the next step is uh, what should we do? What are we going to do? I'm going to expand this term the t plus delta t to the nth power by, uh, by the, some mathematical tools called uh, binomial theorem. Binomial theorem. Let's see if we can expand it. Okay. Actually, for this term, 
uh, I want to expand it, expand this term uh, in a series of digits by the binomial theorem. <laughs> in order to do so, I can first expand it like this, the t plus delta t to the nth power is equal to t plus delta t times t plus delta t. And uh, keep going, times t plus delta t. And up until the last term, the t plus delta t. There are so many terms of t plus delta t, uh, we get n terms. And uh, <coughs> the first is going to be the t to the nth power. I could select uh, t from many terms of it. And uh, I have so many options. I can choose t from the first term. I can also choose t from the second term and from each one of them. And now I want to choose n terms from all, from all of it. So the first term is going to be uh, t. n choose 1, n choose 1, and t to the n power. And I leave no choice for the delta t. The delta t uh, is now to the 0 power. And anything to the 0 power is 1, right? So the derivative of the t to the nth power, the derivative of the t to the nth power is, is now written as limit delta t approaches 0. Let's look at the first term. I choose the t from each one of them. Each one of them. I have so many options. Uh, I, I don't need to care about where the t might be coming from because I'm going to choose n the number of n t. So the first term is going to be n choose 0. I leave no choice for the delta t. I choose n t from all of them, from each one of them, times t to the n power and delta t to the 0 power. All right? And plus n choose 1. <laughs> now I'm going to choose 1 delta t from all of them. I'm going to choose 1 delta t from all of them. And I don't know where it might be coming from. It could be coming from the first term, the second term, the third term, or even the last term. But no matter what, I do know I have so many choices. I have so many choices uh, to choose 1 delta t. And the number of the option, the number of the options is n choose 1 and times delta t to the first power to the first power. So for the rest, it might be, uh, it would be the t to the n minus 1. Let's keep going. A plus n choose 2. Now I'm going to choose 2 delta t from all the terms, from all the terms. Uh, of course, I still don't know where it might be coming from. I have so many options. Uh, the delta t could come uh, could be coming from the first term, the third term, two delta t, or the second term, the last term, two delta t. I have so many options, and the number of the options is n choose two. Is n choose two? So you have a delta t squared and t to the n minus two. Okay, uh, let's keep adding, keep uh, keep continuing up until uh, the n choose n n choose n. I'm going to choose n delta t. So it will be uh, delta t uh, to the nth uh, to the nth power and uh, t to the 0 power. Okay, so all this digit, all this digit is actually equal to uh, the t plus delta t to the nth power. But please remember I'm gonna find. I'm trying to find out the variation for the function. Uh, I need to derive the f of t plus delta t minus the f of t, and now the f of t is t to the nth power. So please don't forget you need to subtract the t to the nth power from it. So you need to put uh, put the t to the nth power down below right here. So you need uh, you need to put a minus t to the nth power. Okay, and all of this, all this digit, all these terms, I need to put it right on the uh, numerator, numerator, and please don't forget the denominator. So let's see if we can simplify this a little bit. 
the n choose 0 is basically 1. And anything to the 0 power is, is 1. So um, let's look at the first term and the very last term. They are basically the same. So I can, uh, these two can be uh, canceled out. I can cancel these two terms. And let's check uh, the digits in between. All those digits in between uh, axiom, they, they all contain, they all contain delta t. They all have delta t in it, like right here. They all have delta t in it. They all have delta t in it. Delta t to the first power, delta t squared, delta t cubed. They all have the delta t. So I could cancel the delta t from the numerator and the denominator. So let's cancel it, cancel it, and cancel it. This is a second power and leaves one. And this is. Uh, uh, this delta t is now cancelled out. Okay, so don't we don't need to care. We don't need to care about that. So let's check. Oh, <coughs> Del cancel the delta t, and uh, it becomes n minus one. It becomes n minus one. Okay. <coughs> Simply Simpler by observing all this digit, all this digit. The first term and the very last term is now vanished. We have already canceled these two terms. And for all the digits in between, they all have the delta t. They all have the delta t. And except for the second term, except for the second term, we only have the n choose 1 times t to the n minus 1. We only have it, right? But please don't forget we are taking the limit as delta t approaches 0. But for the other terms, from start, uh, starting from the third term, even though I have already divided the delta t, I have already canceled one delta t from it, but they still have the delta t in it. They are still having the delta t in it, but now the delta t is approaching zero. It's approaching zero. So all this term that contains, uh, each terms that contains the delta t in it should be regarded as zero, as zero. So. The only one term that don't have the delta t in it will be the only one that still remains. <clears throat> we are so close. We are so close. Yeah, because it has no delta t in it. So actually, you can mm, forget about the limit because this is something that doesn't have the delta t in it. So uh, I only, of course, if you uh, if you know some math, you know the n choose one is basically one. But if you want me to help you to remind what is factor factorial, that is still uh, that is fine. That is okay. The n choose one could be expressed uh, by n factorial factorial and divided by one factorial times n minus 1 factorial. <laughs> so this is basically n and times t to the n minus 1. And congratulations, you have already done the proof. This is n times t to the n minus 1. Finally, so this is uh, this explains why we should take the derivative like this you multiply uh, this term by its power and also the second step is to subtract the one from its power. This is how we do a derivative. In a physics class, we usually use these tools to find out the, uh, the velocity as a function of time by taking the derivative of the position as a function of time. And what is more, I can even take the derivative of the velocity as a function of time again. So it will help me to, to derive the acceleration as a function of time. Let's take the derivative one more time. It will be 4. As you can see, 4 is a constant. So by taking the derivative of the position as a function of time, it can help me to, to, to have, a, uh, to have a, a more detailed information about this whole motion. Since uh, by simply looking at this function, the x of t is 2 times t squared plus 3t and plus 1. This is too complicated. It's now changing its position uh, 
uh, hardly to predict this is position I only know it's now changing this position at different time but what kind of motion it might be so in order to answer this question in order to have a, a, a detailed information about this whole kinematics about this whole motion I can take the derivative of the X of T and we will have the and turns out to be the V of T I, I'm gonna take the derivative of the velocity as a function of time and I'll have the acceleration and it turns out to be it is now a uniformly accelerated motion is uniformly accelerated motion since the acceleration is a constant it will not change as time goes by so by taking the derivative I can know that this function this uh, this motion is actually a uniformly accelerated motion <laughs> okay so all this proof is done by uh, taking the limit as delta t approaches zero and uh, you also need to have some you also need to apply some mathematical tools like the binomial theorem I expand this term the t plus delta t to the nth power I expand it by using the binomial theorem binomial theorem actually this is a physics class and uh, for students uh, in, a, in a math class they do know how to use the binomial theorem and in physics class students do know how to take the derivative of some function of time but they don't know that this kind of uh, general form the general form of derivative can be proved by mathematics we can combine the mathematics and the physics and uh, actually mathematics is truly a good and useful language for you to learn physics um, you can take this as an example I can know that such complicated motion is actually an accelerated a uniformly accelerated motion okay this is how we uh, do the proof of the general form of derivative hope you like it thanks for watching uh, see you next time this is Nash